okay so now we are doing the uh, chapter 2 of bhagavad gita so before krishna was talking about how arjuna should act in terms of the action right you you have a right to act but you do not have right to fruit so you should uh, you should act in a way that you know focus more on the action or uh, uh, stay centered in terms of uh, winning and losing gain and loss pain and pleasure and he was talking more in terms of the action and at this point he's talking more in terms of the state of mind from which he should act right so i uh, bunch together a few verses uh, which talks about the same things so what he's saying is fixed in yoga perform action arjuna this evenness of mind is yoga right and when you act from this evenness of mind the equanimous state of mind your actions are much higher as compared to when you act out of the selfish desires and in that state of mind that even as a state of mind he's talking about the same thing he's talking about the state of mind from where the arjuna should be acting right so in that state of mind you cast off any good or evil and you attain the supreme state so take refuge in that state of mind take refuge in the equanimity right very interesting so he's saying fundamentally is of course when you are like attached to the fruit of your action you are going to you know your mind is going to be uh, active and disturbed right it it will be thinking about um, possible ca possible cases what it will be worrying actually basically it will be worrying or uh, you know uh, and disturbing you in terms of taking right actions right instead of focusing on the work that you, that is in your hand this fight that arjuna is fighting it will be disturbing him and that's what is actually happening that's why arjuna is basically asking krishna to you know uh, guide him because his state of mind is not in the in the in the battle itself it is, his state is mind his state of mind is very much wavering he's thinking about all the other things other than the work right so he's seeing so what he's suggesting here is uh, perform fix in yoga and here the yoga means this evenness of mind right neither you care about winning nor you care about losing nor you care about the fruit of action but you are in this state of uh, centeredness in this state of equanimity and you should act from that state of mind right you should attain that state of mind first and then you should act from that state of mind and know that when you act from that state of mind your actions are going to be uh, much higher as compared to you know when you are uh, strongly attached to the fruit of action you have to win and then you're planning and plotting and then as compared to that uh, this state of mind will bring much better fruit that's what he's suggesting here in fact he's saying take refuge in this equanimity right instead of taking refuge in different philosophical uh, thinking or you know uh, being righteous or uh, i have to do the right things and i have to serve or i have to do this or i have to do that He's saying take refuge in this equanimous state of mind, right? Uh, that's your natural state, and you are going to be uh, most uh, effective. You are going to be in a most in the much better condition if you act from that state of mind, right? And when you're acting from that state of mind, you attain the supreme state because you're not again creating more cycles of disturbance. You're just um, uh, doing what is in your hand and you're doing it the, at the best possible efficiency yep so in these uh, few verses he was suggesting like act from the equanimous, equanimous state of mind right instead of uh, instead of uh, you know being disturbed by all these different external uh, expectation and different things and then he says uh, this so what he's saying is basically in the next few verses again is this should be your natural state of mind right like a child this should be your natural state of mind but currently you are deluded currently you are ignorant you your mind is being disturbed because of that delusions right so he's suggesting here when your intellect when your intellect crosses the mire of delusion the forest of delusion you will become indifferent in the enjoyment of this world or the next world or something that you heard of or something that you never, you never even heard of. You are just completely disinterested in this uh, game of sense enjoyment altogether, right? And then your intellect, confused by so many conflicting ideas, will finally rest steady and undistracted in God. Then you will attain yoga. 
yeah again here god does not mean in my understanding god does not mean any kind of person here but he it means like uh, your state of awareness your your state of being where you have transcended this thoughts and emotion and then this whole you know disturbance of the mind from where you are acting right now yeah once you have crossed that um, then whatever is your self left that is referred here as a god right and i think he's going to talk about this anyhow later but currently what he's saying is when your intellect crosses the mire of delusion you will become indifferent in the enjoyment of this world or the next or whatever you have heard or whatever you not even heard yet yeah so that's what he's saying is because of this a delusion or because of this ignorance you are interested in all these things right otherwise uh, what and then the second part of the same thing is when your intellect confused by so many conflicting idea will rest steady and undisturbed in god right in yourself then you will attain yoga right so he is doing two fold things right he is doing this over on the on the pretty much all the uh, uh, all the teachings right one he is pulling arjuna back from his current state of uh, being where he is acting out of ignorance and he is acting for these sense enjoyments his his uh, his thinking is based on that right and then he is bringing him to more towards like your self or your uh, true nature right and he is saying when you get steady in your true nature in your go- in the god in yourself and when you study in there and on the other hand when your intellect is crossed the uh, all the delusion of course this is going to happen at the same on the same uh, level right once you cross that of course you are going to come here right so then you will attain uh, the state of mind which is much higher than enjoyment in the, what you call currently enjoyment so you will automatically will become um, disinterested in anything that you have heard of you or you uh, haven't even heard of internally right externally you will still be acting but internally you don't have so much craving left right because you have already been you are already in the state which is higher than anything that you can crave for yeah so so these were the two verses the first uh, set of verses are talking about being in the evenness of mind and acting from that state the second is talking about when your intellect cross all kind of delusions of ignorance and finally rest in itself finally rest in the god then you will attain yoga okay then arjuna asks interestingly okay so how does this person you are talking about right you are talking about the person who is uh, even in all the situation and he is attained this supreme state where he is not confused anymore and he doesn't desire anymore or anything so how does this person look like how does he sit how how does he sit how does it talk how is it walk or sleep and all these kind of things how how is this kind of a person behave basically yeah then krishna is telling um, when he when someone leaves all the craving emerging from the mind and in is contented is contented in the self by the self again he's saying the same thing when he leaves all the craving emerging from the mind right and then he's content in the self by the self right he left the craving of the mind and then what is left is basically his self and he's content in that self and that person is not basically agitated in misfortune desire for pleasure um, passion fear anger is departed from this person he meets good and evil with the centered mind neither rejoicing nor recoiling and his wisdom is firm right so the same thing that he was talking about before uh, this person has left the craving uh, that is emerging from the mind a different sense oriented craving different uh, goals Uh, for personal gains and all these kind of stuff and he find contentment in himself right in his deeper self so this person is not agitated in any misfortune because he's not uh, he doesn't have so much expectation anyway from these mis uh, from a different kind of uh, uh, events in that sense he doesn't desire anything his passion fear anger are departed and he meets good and evil neither rejoicing nor recalling and his wisdom is firm right so even though he uh, so then he talks about the about the person who is actually currently not in that state but he is practicing right and he is saying even though 
that person um, he tries to leave the sense objects the taste remains right because this is the only uh, how could you leave something uh, which is the only pleasurable things you know right so it's more like he's talking about even though he leaves he practices to leave the sense related object the taste is still remains right and this relish also disappear for the one who has attained the supreme right so he's saying once you have attained the much higher taste uh, your desire of tasting it will still be there right so it's more like um, uh, you will pra you are practicing and you know where you're moving but unless you attain that state you will still be you know you will still have this uh, craving inside yourself because that's because you know this is uh, pleasurable and you know only this is pleasurable right but once you attain once you cross that uh, bridge and once you cross that threshold and once you attain uh, this uh, a higher uh, realize the supreme or tasted much higher uh, um, tasted much higher taste uh, then your desire for you know this small cravings that you left in the mind will also be uh, disappear very interesting okay